Hello and welcome back. This is A Level Math S1 9709, and today uh, this is the last chapter. This is the last topic. Uh, binomial uh, in this in this uh, chapter four, we are going to uh, learn about binomial distribution, normal distribution, and geometric distribution, which is new for me. Okay, so let's get right into it. We have done all the chapter, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. This is the last one, and this is the last chapter of A Level A Level Math S1. So let's get started. Okay, here we have is binomial distribution. So, what is the distribution? Uh, an important part of analyzing data set which indicates all the potential outcomes of the data and how frequently they occur. So, what uh, the distribution is, uh, is an important part of analyzing the data. Okay, it indicates all the potential outcomes and also tells us that how frequently they occur. Then we have this binomial distribution. Discrete. It is a discrete probability distribution, and uh, the discrete data can only take certain value, uh, values and it is counted, counted. Okay, let me tell you something. The difference between binomial and normal distribution is by in binomial you try to, you have only certain values which are countable, right? But in, in normal distribution you have continuous data set like having a height, time, um, having a weight, you know. But in binomial you, you, you're, you're just having uh, this, uh, certain values which you can easily count it, count it, you know. So yeah, so this is binomial distribution, and it's really easy, and and you know you 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 understand this. Most it is most widely used probability distribution that has discrete outcome. Discrete outcome, which means which are which can be counted, right? Uh, it can be thought of as simply the probability of a success or a failure. Okay, this distribution uh, involves uh, having a probability of success or a failure outcome in the experiment or a survey that is repeated multiple times. Okay, so there is a survey which is which is repeated multiple times, and it has the probability of having a success or a failure. Okay, so it is a type of distribution that that has two possible outcomes: success or failure. Success is p, and failure is obviously one minus p is equal to q, which is the inverse of p. So what you have is uh, p success, q failure, and n is repeated trials. Okay, so let's suppose you have this question. You will uh, the question is you will fl flip a coin. What is the probability of having zero heads? Okay, and and this okay. So this is the experiment that we are doing, and it is repeated five times. And it's saying that uh, if I flip a coin, then what will be what will be the probability that uh, of having zero? So you are doing the experiment. It is repeated five times, and the and the, and the success is uh, the probability of having zero head. So having zero head, which means having having a tail. So the probability of having a tail is one upon two. So this is a success, or you know. Okay, having zero head, so this is success of having zero head, and this is failure. So we are just going to multiply this by five times. So it happens five times, and then you have the answer. This is the probability. Okay, I think this is success, and this is failure. Okay, so this is the, so now you have this another question, and the question is: you flip a coin, what is the probability of having one head? So, so this is the probability of success, and having a one head is one upon two, and this is again repeated five times. So, what we're going to do here is, since it says that it it has been repeated five times, right? And the probability of having a head, and it repeated five times. Okay, so which means the other would be tails, tails 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 so there you go it repeated five times and the uh, and you have one head and there are four tails okay now what is the probability of having a head it is one upon two and the probability of having a tails is one upon two again power four okay now you're going to uh, make an arrangement you know it could h could be in here or in here or in here or in here uh yeah we don't know okay so since we, we have we have to make an arrangement so it's going to be multiply by uh, 5 factorial upon 4 factorial or you could just write it down like this uh, you can just write it down like 5c f uh, 5c1 okay so the and there you go this is the answer this this is binomial distribution the the formula that you will use is like this ncr multiply by p R multiplied by Q R minus one. 
okay so p is a success and q is a failure and this is ncr so right here one uh, having a having one head is a success and the probability of having one head is one upon two then the rest would be having tails right so having one head is this it would be one upon two and this also be one upon one upon two and it's repeated five times so five c and since uh, having one head so five c one this is one and then five um yeah so this is five c one then this is going to be n minus one this is going to be n minus one so it's going to be four so this is the formula of binomial distribution all right and it's the same thing that have been happened here there are five different possibilities the head could be in the first position or in the second or in the third or in the fourth or, in, or the fifth and this is the formula okay so let's get a move on we have done this question and we also understood what is the formula so p is a success q is a failure and n c x x means number of success and you know n minus x number of failures okay so suppose a die is tossed suppose a die is tossed five times what is the probability of getting uh, exactly two fours okay since n is n is five and the probability of getting two fours okay you know you will getting a four which is which is two times so the probability of having a four is one upon six and it's happening two times so one upon six and you just square it and the probability of not having a two is five upon six and it is repeated five times so it's going to be three and you need to make a arrangement so we're going to just take uh, the the n is five and the number of success is two so f five c two so this is the answer all right this is how you do in you know by this how you do by this how you do do the question in binomial distribution what we have done is that um, this the experiment has been repeated five times so five and what is the probability of getting exactly two fourth The probability of having a four is one upon six, but it is repeated two times, so five c two. This is the pro the probability of success, and the probability of not having a four is five point six. And since uh, we only got two times, so the yeah, three times would be you know three five point six. And then you just multiply, it and you will get the answer. Okay, so condition of binomial distribution experiment consists of n repeated trials we need we definitely uh, should know uh, what is the total number of trials repeated trials and they are fixed it, it cannot be changed a single trial has has exactly two possible outcomes success p and failure q like for example having a success having of uh, the probability of having four this success and not having four is a failure in the experiment okay the probability of, of success denoted by p is the same on every trial the trials are independent that is the outcome of on one trial does not affect the outcome on other trials probabilities are multiplied together okay if these conditions are met then x has a binomial distribution with parameters n which is the total and p is the uh, the probability of success abbreviated as this in the okay so the question could be given in 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 this form as well so you need to remember that b stands for binomial distribution and is the total number and p is the success the probability of success in the experiment or in the survey in a binomial distribution only two parameters namely n and p are needed to de to determine the probability and that is true okay we are also going to understand about the mean and the variance as well so in the mean the mean of a distribution it it's it's look like a u which is equal to n multiplied by p so n is the total and multiplied by p is the success of fail uh, a probability of success so mean is equal to n multiplied by p and if we want if we really want to find the variance then n multiplied by p multiplied by q so you can just see this like that n p is mean multiplied by q is equal to variance and if we want to know the standard deviation then we'll just do the square root we have this question and the question is at the non land business college all students sit on accountancy examination at the end of their year of the study on average 80 percent of the student pass this examination okay the question is a random sample of nine student who will take this examination is chosen find the probability that at most six of these student will pass the examination okay so the um, the probability is 80% the, probab the, the probability of success which means the student pass the examination is 80 is 0 0.8 okay and not passing the examination is 0 0.2 and it says this this is n and 
at this is the condition that we need to prove it says at most 6 and the total are 9 at most 6 which means it must be less than 7 so here's what we're going to do since it says that we need to find the probability that at most 6 which means less than 7 of the student will pass the examination so here's what we're going to do um, we're going to take 1 minus getting the probability of having 8 and probability of having 9 and having the probability of having 7 and then we just do the minus and then we'll, we could get the answer for having the probability of having you know less than 7 this is how you're going to do it so the probability of having 8 student passing the examination is um, 9c8 multiplied by 0 0.8 of power 8 and multiplied by 0 0.2 of power 1 then minus doing the same thing and doing the same thing you just minus do the minus and then you get the answer so that's exactly what we have done 987 okay so 9c9 all students are being have passed the examination this is the probability 0 0.8 multiplied 0 0.2 then 8, at, uh, 8 students have passed the examination so 9c8 multiplied 0 0.8 of power 8 or 0 0.2 7 students have passed the examination something like this you add them up or you just di do directly subtract you know one one minus all of them and you get the answer another question uh, the, the question is blank cds are packed in boxes of 30 the probability that a blank cd is faulty is 0 0.04 a box is rejected if more than two of the blank cds are faulty okay they are packed in box of 30 cd is faulty 0 0.04 a blank cd is faulty 0 0.04 Thanks for playing box of 30 in boxes of 30. So there are 30 blank cities in a box. A box is rejected if more than two of the blank cities are faulty. Find the probability that the, black, that, that the box is rejected. Okay. So we need to find the probability of having more than two. So we can just do like this. If you want to know the probability of having more than two, and there are at least 30 of them. So the best way, the best approach for this is minus um, p of zero, then p of 1 then p of 2 and then you just subtract to you know by my by 1 and you will get the probability same thing as i have done here so the probability of having zero faulty cds you know is this 30 c0 but 0 0.04 which means uh, and multiply 0 0.96 0 0.96 is the probability of being uh, not faulty okay so this is the probability this is the probability of success okay so 0 0.04 and yeah 30 c1 0 0.04 0 0.96 and 30 c2 0 0.04 0 0.96 add them up and you get the answer so the best way to identify the probability of success or probability of failure is first you try to see what is written in the question and then you try to know that what the question really want like for example if it says that uh, blank cities are packed in box of 30 and then it says that um, uh, it says that find the probability that the box is rejected so this is a probability of success and if a box is rejected it means that more than two of the mm, um, it means that the blank cities are faulty right so this is the probability this is the probability of success and if it is against this if they are if they are not faulty then it would be probability of of failure uh, probability of success probability of failure seeing these uh, you know hearing these sentences probability of success success of what success for when when you are trying to make a trial and you want that to happen that's that's what you can call it a probability of success you want it to happen okay and but something that doesn't happen according to your will that's a probability of failure so right now we we want to know the probability that the box is rejected so this is the probability of success it we want to know that probability okay so okay so we have another question in a restaurant be juice 30 percent of customer rated the food as poor 32 percent of customer rated the food as satisfactory and 65 percent of rated as good 13 poor 22 satisfactory 65 good a random sample sample of 12 customer this is n who went for a meal at restaurant which was taken find the probability that more than two and fewer than 12 of them uh, rate the food as good okay so it says more than two and fewer than 12 which means it must be in this range and there are at least 
12 customers who went for a meal okay now to have this we can just say 1 minus um, p of 0 p of 1 okay and then since there are 12 customers and then you know p of 12 I think you will get this 0 1 2 12 yeah and this is how you can do it this is how you get the answer since it says to find the probability that more than two of them have them rated the food as good so this is the probability of success and the probability of uh, rated the food as good is 65 so, so 0.65 is the probability of success and against it is the probability of failure so this is how you do so this is the question the question is Robert uses, uses his calculator to, to, to do Robert uses his calculator to generate five random integers between one and nine inclusive. Okay, so inclusive means including one and nine. Find the probability that at least two of the five integers. So there are total five, and we have to choose at least. Uh, we have to take. Uh, you know, we have to we have to know the probability of at least two. And by means of at least two, it means that two uh, two including including two, three, four, five, right? And of the integers are less than or equal to four. Okay. So it's saying less than or equal to 4, which means 1, 2, 3, 4. So the probability of success is 4.9. Okay. Then it's saying at least 2 of the 5 integers, which means we can we can write it down like this. At least 2. 1 minus P of the probability of having 0, the probability of having 1. And and voila we can just do it like this so probability of m0 is 5c0 multiplied by 4 upon 9 of power 0 and then multiply by 5 upon 5 upon 9 of power 5 okay and same thing happening in here and i think this is how you will write it down 5 you know like this then you get the answer it's really easy okay so this was part one now for part two Robert, uh, Robert now generate n random integers okay, between 1 and 9 inclusive. The random variable x is the number of these n integers which are less than or equal to a certain integer k is between 1 and 9 inclusive. It is given that the mean of x is 96 and the variance of x is 32. Okay, find the value of n and q. Which means we need to find the total and we need to find that particular variable, that integer which is where we are trying to say that it, it must be less than or equal to a k, right? Okay. So, the formula for mean is n multiplied by b. We, we, uh, we know what is uh, mean is 96 and we don't know n, we're going to find out and we uh, also don't know p as well. Now variance, we have the formula for variance which is just, okay. Now for variance is 32 and we know the mean so it's going to be 96 and then q. There you can find the Q and it would, be, it would be 1 upon 3 and after finding Q we, we can find P and it is 2 upon 3. So now we're going to use 2 upon 3 and then multiply and we get 144. Okay, so we got the value of N. Now we need to find the value of K. Right now you can see here the same thing as we have done in part 1. Like we have the probability of success of 4 upon 9 right which means we have uh, having those four integers which are less than or equal to four which are one two three four right similarly we have this probability of success and it says between one and nine which means the total must be nine so we're going to multiply this by three on you know in here and here we're going to multiply this by three going to be 6 upon 9 and so this is so the value of k is 6 which means 6 was the number that we need to uh, you know find the probability that it must be less than or equal to this 6 okay so this is the answer the question is done and this is how it's been here yeah, it has been okay it's the answer all right moving on in a certain mountainous region in winter, the probability of, of more than 20 cm of snow falling in any particular day is 0 0.21. Part 1 is for 4 randomly chosen uh, for 4 randomly chosen 7 day periods. For 4 randomly chosen 7 day periods, okay, which means we are choosing 4 days out of 7. 
okay find the probability that exactly three of these period will have at least one day with more than 20 centimeter of snow falling okay first of all we knew that we know this this probability of you know it's p um probability of success is 0 0.21 and uh, for four randomly chosen seven days okay so we are talking about weeks so there are four weeks find the probability that exactly three of these period which means we're going to first mm, yeah so it's going to be 4c3 and then of this we of this people will have at least one day okay first of all we're going to find the probability of at least one day with more than 20 centimeter of snow falling right here says okay we're going to find this right now it says at least one day and by means of at least one day which means we need to find the probability of greater than equal to one we can write it down we can write it down like this one minus um p probability of zero so one minus and the the total number is the probability of more than 20 centimeters of snow falling in any particular day is this okay so we don't know um okay so i can just write it down like nc0 multiply by 0 0.21 of power 0 multiply by okay this is going to be problematic for so 4 randomly chosen so exactly 3 of this period would have at least 1 day so it's going to be 7 c okay so so the total n is n is 7 so we're going to write it down like 7 c 0 multiply by uh, 0 0.21 and then multiply by 0 0.79 and we got the answer for this and the answer and the probability would be let me use a calculator 1 minus 7 c 0 multiply by 0 0.21 of power 0 and then we're going to use 0 0.79 of power 7 and we get 0 0.808 okay so the probability is 0 0.808 and now this becomes the probability of success we're going to use this one now it's now say it's saying for four randomly chosen seven day period in the winter there exactly three of these will have at least one day with more than 20 centimeters of snow falling so we're going to use this and say exactly three out of four so we're going to write down like 4c3 multiplied by uh, 0 0.08 of power 3 multiplied by uh, 0 0.2 0 0.192 of power 1 so it's something like this and i was right okay so first of all what we did here first we have taken the probability of this it's yeah we'll have at least one day with more than 20 centimeters of snow falling from in a seven day period so we have done this and after finding this then we we will use this as a probability of success it's because same for four randomly chosen because of four randomly chosen weeks exactly three of these period will have this so four c three multiply with this and you got the answer okay so now moving to another question a box contains 300 discs of different colors. There are 100 pink colors, 100 blue colors uh, disc, and 100 orange disc. The discs of each color are numbered from 0 to 99. Okay, so they are numbered from 0 to 99. Five discs are selected at random, one at a time with replacement. Okay, find the probability that find the probability that no orange discs are selected okay so no orange disc are selected and there are 300 total disc and having 100 each of these different colors since it's saying that uh, five discs are, uh, that no orange discs are, discs are selected so the so the probability of success would be uh, 200 upon 300 this would be the probability of success okay and saying no probability no origins are selected and five discs are selected so it's going to be 5c okay no orange discs are selected 
if no orange leaves are selected we can just yes we can just write it down like this 5 is 4 multiply by 200 upon 300 power 4 multiply by 100 upon 300 okay so i think this is the answer for part one and uh, yes that's how we did okay now for part two the probability that exactly two discs with numbers ending in a six are selected okay it says exactly two disc five discs are selected but, but exactly two disc with numbers ending in a six so number from 0 to 99 and those only those which are ending in a 6 are selected for example uh, 6 16 26 36 46 56 70 uh, 66 76 86 96 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so there are a total 10 numbers ending in a 6 okay all right and so since there are 10 numbers and there are total hundreds from each of these but wait 10 for each hundred of these discs but since there are 300 discs so it's going to be multiplied by 3 so it's 30 upon 300 as a probability of success okay and now it's saying that exactly two discs with number ending in a six are selected so it's going to be 5 c2 multiplied by 30 upon 300 and so it's 2 and then 270 upon 300 as this this is the answer for part 2 part 3 is the probability that exactly two orange discs with numbers ending in a six are selected okay so five discs are selected and exactly two orange discs with numbers ending in a six are selected okay so it's going to be it's going to be 10 upon 300 okay since there are we are choosing at least 10 orange discs which which have a number on six are selected out of 300 it's actually 300 all right okay so this is the answer 10 upon 300 which means 10 orange discs which have a number on six are you know selected and you know this is the probability of success and then we're we just going to uh, 5c2 multiply by 10 upon 1 upon 30 of power 2 multiply by um yeah we're just going to get q by 1 minus p and then you will get q and then you just do power 3 and you get the answer the same okay i've done this differently but we get the same answer and you know scan cell out and you got 1 upon 30 and you just do the done the same thing Okay, so now let's see part 4. The part 4 is the mean and variance of the number of pink discs are selected. There are 300 discs and there are 100 pink discs, pink discs. So it's 1 upon 3 as the probability of success. So P is 1 upon 3. And so we need to find the variance. So it's going to be N multiplied by P and N is 300 multiplied by 1 upon 3. And if we want to know the variance, so it's going to be 300 multiplied by 1 upon 3 multiply by 2 upon 3 so this is the answer and yeah this okay since so it says 500 5 discs are selected find the mean and variance of the number of pink discs selected find the mean and variance of the number of pink discs are selected of the number of pink discs selected so there are five discs and says the number of pink discs are selected so the probability of having uh, a pink disc is one upon three and it's written f it's five since it says number of five discs are selected so it's going to be five and in here the same thing it's going to be five okay so this is the answer okay Now the next question is, the next question is the probability that that you complete a Sudoku puzzle correctly is 0 0.75. So attempt 14 Sudoku puzzle every month. So n is 14, and the probability of success is 0 0.75. Find the value of x that has the highest probability. What you may assume that this value is one of the two values closest to the mean of x. 
okay closest to the mean of x so you need to find the mean at first so it's going to be 14 but 0 0.75 you will get the mean and then it's saying value is one of the two values closest to the mean find that has the highest probability okay so finding the mean is so I just do it directly 0 0.75 multiplied by 14 so it's going to be 10.5 it's 10.5 they're saying that the uh, find the value of x that has a highest probability you may assume that this value is one of the two values closest to the mean of x so it is closest to the mean of x either it is 11 or it is um, 10 okay so the probability find the value that highest probability so okay so it's saying that you know find the value of x that has the highest probability you may assume that this value of, uh, is one of the two values close to the mean of x what uh, what does this mean for the mean is telling us that that there are 10.5 um correct attempt for for you know for they are this, i mean that three attempt 14 so to go puzzle but the mean is that there are at least at, at, at some point 10.5 so to go puzzle that have been completed correctly okay so it, now it's saying that the value is one of the two values closest to the mean of x which means it could be 10 or it could be 11 and if for example if i take 11 as uh, i mean 11 pseudocode puzzle which have been done correctly and then if i just try to you uh, make a find the probability uh, 14 c 11 multiply by zero point seven five then it's going to be 0 0.25 as 3 and if I use a calculator of mine I so it's to 0 0.24 so to so the probability is to 0 0.24 you got the probability of this of 11 and if I choose 10 so the probability of 10 would be, I'm just going to do it directly, 14 C10 multiply by 0 0.75 for power 10 and then uh, multiply by 0 0.25 of power 4 and the probability is 0 0.22 for this, uh, you know, using this the probability is 0 0.22 so it's saying it has, which has the highest probability, this has the highest probability so 11 is the answer Okay, so same thing uh, it has been done here. We found out 10.5, and we need to know which which is uh, one of the you know uh, the value of x is one of the two values close to the mean of x. So either 10 or 11, and then we find out that this has the highest probability. So this is the answer. Uh, HAP attempts a crossword puzzle every day. A crossword puzzle, one puzzle for each day. The number of puzzles she completes in a week, seven days, is denoted by x. On average, have completed seven out of ten of these puzzles, so we got this probability of success. Use the binomial distribution to find the probability that have completes at least five puzzles in a week. So in a week, which means seven days, and every day she complete she do she attempts a cross puzzle, right? So the total end is seven, and it says at least five, so we can take five, six, and seven. Okay, and there you go. This is the answer. Simple as that. Now another question, there are a large number of students in a literally college, 60% of the students are boys and which means 40% must be girls. Students can choose exactly one of games, drama or music on Friday afternoon. It is found that 75% of the boys choose games, 10% of the boys choose drama and the remainder of the boys choose music. Uh, of the girls, 30% choose games, 55% choose drama and remainder choose music. Five drama students are chosen at random. Find the probability that at least one of them is a boy. So five drama students. What is the probability of having a drama student? So let me write it down the probability of having a drama student. So 0 0.6 because 60% are boys. 
and drama students you know 10 percent of the boys choose drama so 0 0.10 plus 0 0.60 percent of boys and most and so 10 percent choose drama and as for the girls 0 0.40 are girls and 0 0.55 percent of the girls choose drama okay so th this is the probability and now we need to know um it's the same question as we, uh, you know, as we have been doing, uh, as we have been doing in the probability questions, right? First of all, they try to ask you that given that uh, the students are in a drama, students choose drama, find the probability that it's a boy. So it's the same here, same scenario in here. You have found, you have found the probability of, you know, the student choosing drama. Given that the student has chosen drama, what is the probability that that the student that that student is a boy? So, uh, let me. Let me see what's the answer. So it's 0 0.60 multiplied by 0 0.10 plus 0 0.40 multiplied by 0 0.55 and it's 0 0.28. Okay, so it's 0 0.28 and the answer is 0 0.28. Now it's it's a scenario like given that it's uh, that chosen that student has chosen drama student chosen. drama find the probability that it's a boy so this is the probability of being a boy and choosing drama so here you go so we have found the probability of success this is the probability that we wanted and I think the answer and you know let's see what's the probability so 0 0.60 multiplied by 0 0.10 uh, 0 0.28 so it's actually 0 uh, 3 upon 14 it's 3 upon 14 okay now five drama children are children at random find the probability that at least one of them is a boy so there's a probability of being a boy and choosing a drama so you know so the drama student is the, the, the probability of being a boy and choosing drama so it looks something like this 5c0 multiply 0 0.214 multiply 11 upon uh, 4 yeah 14 so yeah since it says that at least one so we can just write down like one is equal to one minus p of zero then you can get at least one wait should be like this at least one yeah yeah there you go so, so they are asking for at least one of them, so greater than at least one, so one minus p of uh, probability of having zero boys, so then you get the, the, the probability, so it's like this, okay, just everything exactly what I have done here, so this is the answer. Okay, another question is: uh, Passengers are traveling to Pai to Paikan by minibus. The probability that each each passenger carries a backpack is 0.65 independently of other passengers. Each minibus has uh, each minibus has seats for 12 passengers, and um, each passenger carries a backpack. F passengers get onto an empty minibus of maybe 12 passengers. Find the probability that the fourth passenger who gets on the minibus will be the first to be carrying a backpack so they are seeing the fourth uh, passenger find the probability that the fourth passenger who gets on the minibus will be the one to be carrying a backpack okay the fourth passenger still it doesn't really matter fourth passenger doesn't matter if it's first or second they're saying it, it, it is the first to be carrying a backpack so and there are 12 passengers so i think it's going to be 12 c1 or maybe not 12 c1 it's going to be 0 0.65 multiplied by 0 0.35 okay there would be no arrangement because they have fixed the, the position that it must be the fourth passenger okay who gets on the minibus fourth passenger that's it so i can just you know make an arrangement that should be can be first second third no it says fourth that's it so i think this is the answer and uh, yes this is the answer wait okay
passengers get on the empty minibus, find the probability that the fourth passenger who gets on the minibus will be the first to be carrying a backpack. So, maybe it's like this. So there are four passengers and the fourth is carrying a backpack and the others are not carrying a backpack. Okay. And the probability of having a backpack on the fourth passenger is 0 0.65 and the rest of the three haven't got a backpack. So 0 0.35 of power 3. And since we cannot uh, make an arrangement because it says the fourth passengers and that's it. You, you, they have fixed the position. Right? So this is the answer. A factory maker, uh, a factory makes water pistols. Eight percent of which do not work properly. In a random sample of n water pistols, the probability that at least one does not work properly is greater than 0 0.9. Find the smallest possible value of n. Okay. 8% of the water uh, do not work properly in a random sample of n water pistols. This is the total n. The probability that at least one does not work properly is greater than 0 0.9. At least uh, yes, greater than 0 0.9. Okay. The sum is greater. Find the smallest possible value of n. Okay. It's saying that at least one does not work properly. So the probability of at least one does not work properly is it is greater than 0 0.9 which means that it's telling us that it's the probability is greater than 0 0.9 at the same time we need to, we need to find the probability of so in order to do that we could just do like 1 minus um, oh, 0 probability of 0 and uh, we know this that this value is Okay, so let me just sub make a substitution and I'll just do it in here, make a substitution in here. So I will get 1 minus probability of 0 is, e uh, is greater than 0 0.9. And then, okay, now I need to know this, the probability of 0. So it's saying that n number of pistol and having the probability of success is 8%. And that's it. That's all we have. So 1 minus uh, nc0. Multiply by probability of success is 0 0.08 which is 0 multiplied by 0 0.92 which is n so this will vanish this will vanish and this will be left okay so 1 minus 0 0.92 power n is greater than 0 0.9 one will go on the on that side and uh, wait it could be I could write down like this for 0 0.9 0 0.92 so it's 0 0.1 0 0.92 okay so we need to power we need to find this n in order to find it we can put a logarithm so we're going to put ln on both sides so it's going to be ln 0 0.1 and ln n will come here uh, 0 0.92 and then you just do the division okay ln 0 0.1 is minus it is it's in minus form so it's minus 2.30 and and ln uh, okay and ln 0 0.92 is ln 0 0.92 is it's also in minus form as well multiply by 0 0.08 minus so i think dividing this okay first of all i can just make the cancellation and could get this okay so now let me see what is the value ln 0 0.1 upon ln 0 0.92 and i get the value 27 okay i got 20 uh 27.6 that's another thing if we have both the negative values and you know if we try to divide uh minus by if we try to divide by minus one on both sides then the sign will change so dividing on both side by minus one so so it would be left as two point and you know it will it will look something like this okay so then making a division the sign will change and this 
how it is and then you will get the answer as n is equals to 28 okay so this is the answer same thing as I have done here done in this way then I reach here and then I just write down like while dividing a number by a negative number uh, by a negative number on both sides should I should have write it down like on both sides okay the sign will change okay so the sign definitely will change because I was dividing by a negative number but since both are negative so divide both sides by by minus one that okay now moving to the last question of this binomial distribution on any occasion with a, when a particular gymnast performs a certain routine the probability that she will perform incorrectly is 0 0.65 independently of all other equations on another so she performed the routine n times okay find the smallest value of n for which the expected number of correct performance is at least 8 okay she performed it correctly so probability of success is 0 0.65 then she performed n times find the smallest value of n for which the expected number of correct performance is at least 8 expected number which means we are talking about the mean uh, the expected number of the correct performance is at least 8 which means it's telling us that at least 8 at least 8 which means at least like this and multiply by p and you got the probability of success so 0 0.65 and you got a mean and then you're just going to divide this you know 8 upon 6, 0 0.65 and you will get 12.3 uh, 12.3 which means you will get 13 that's the answer okay so it's the same thing as in here so this is the end of binomial distribution and then we're going to go with we'll go with geometric okay so now we're going to start with geometric distribution okay so what is a geometric distribution and what is the difference between geometric and binomial so binomials in, in the binomial distribution we have the limit like uh, like that uh, like any survey or experiment has been repeated this time or that time n number of times like for example rolling a die six times or seven times but in geometric you don't have that n you don't you don't know what is the limit it's just that uh, you repeat an experiment till success happens for the first time. That's that's geometric distribution. Okay, that's the difference. The rest or the rest are the same. There's success and failure, and uh, you will understand this very shortly. It means that uh, that that uh, that after after rep after so many times of repeating an experiment uh, for the first time, you get the ex you get the success. But uh, like for example, the the experiment has been repeated seven times. So six time it has been failed, and for the first time it have uh, it become success. So six time, which means uh, like the experiment repeated seven times. So seven minus one six uh, q uh, the the probability of failure of power six and multiply by the probability of success power p. You know the probability this this is the probability of success. Uh, this is the power one, and the probability the probability of failure power uh, q. I'm saying this that for example, this the experiment has been repeated seven times, right? So six, uh, then uh, repeated seven times. So after six time, you got a success. So experiment was repeated seven times, but after six time, you got success. This is the probability of success, and this is the probability of failure. Okay. So this is what the uh, this is what it's telling you that uh, something is repeated so many times, and after first time, you got a success. Uh, and the probability of having success is p of power one, and the and the probability of having so many failures six times. So Q of power 6. Okay. You got success or failure. You got repeating experimental success happened for the first time. It also have discrete outcomes. And there is no N involved. Okay. So this is R, R denote as number of repeat uh, where we want success to happen. So it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same formula. And whenever you want to find the mean, we will do 1 upon P. 1 upon uh, probability of success. And you need to remember these things, like uh, if, if x is if, uh, if x is less than or equal to r, then one minus q r. If x is less than r, then one minus q of power and r minus one. If x is greater than r, then q of power r. And if x is greater than or equal to r, then q of r minus one. And you you need to remember this as well. Okay. So in geometric distribution, you just need to remember these, and you need to understand this, and you need to understand this. That's it. So this is geometric. 
Now let's do the question. A five, a five, a fair spinner with five side number one, two, three, four, five is spun repeatedly. The score on each spin is the number on the side on which the spinner lands. Find the probability that the score of three is obtained for the first time on the eighth spin. Find the probability that a score of three, a score of three is obtained for the first time on the eighth spin. Okay. So the answer would be. Okay, with five side. Okay, it's so spun repeatedly. Whenever we, whenever we get these kind of, uh, you will. Whenever you get, get this kind of sentence or word, that's uh, it is repeatedly. Repeatedly means this is uh, this is geometric distribution. If you do not get this word, then remember that it would be binomial. Otherwise, it would be uh, geometric because it says repeatedly and there is no n. The score on the the score on each spin is the number on the sign on which the spin lands. Find the probability of the score of three. Okay, so the probability of uh, the probability of success is one upon five. It's obtained for the first time on the eighth spin. Okay, for the first time on the eighth spin, which means um, it's been repeated so many times and I've been failed so many times. So seven power is seven, and but then after that it, it bec uh, is obtained for the first time on the eighth spin. Okay, so eighth spin. So this is the eighth spin power one. Okay. So Q is 4 upon 5 of power 7 multiplied by P is 1 upon 5 of power 1. Okay, so this is the answer. And yeah, this is the answer. And obviously you're not going to make an arrangement since it says that it will happen on the 8th spin. That's why there's no NC, uh, there's no 7C1 or something like that. It's geometric, not binomial. Okay, part B is find the probability that fewer than 6 spin are required to, ob to obtain a score of 3 for the first time. To obtain a score of 3 for the first time. Fewer than 6. So we need to find the probability of having fewer than 6. So after uh, uh, seeing the formula, I will uh, I already know what to write. So it's 1 minus and it's going to be Q of power 5. Which means it's going to be 1 minus 4 upon 5 of power um, 5. Okay, so yeah. How did I find out that I will have to write right like this? So I've already told you this. We need to memorize this. I've just used this one, right? X is less than 6, so 6 minus 1 is 5. So 1 minus the probability of failure. These are all probability of failures, okay? Uh, 1 minus probability of fewer of power 5. So that's what I did. And this is the answer. Either you could do so, uh, you could do it like this, you know. The, what is the concept here? The concept is it says that what is the probability, what are the chances that fewer than six spins are required to obtain a score for the first time, score of three for the first time, which means there could be a chance if we, uh, there, there could be a chance of getting it. What are the, what are the chance of getting that, that score if we are repeating the spin uh, less than six? So, for example, uh, you got the first chance. You got the chance. Of, you got the. You have, you have obtained a score after one spin. You obtain a score. You have to obtain a score after two spin. Or you have obtained a score after three spin. Or you have obtained the f score after four spin. Or you have obtained the score after five spin. You just add them up. You got the probability. Or you can just do it directly. Okay. So this was the concept. All right. So next question. An ordinary fair die is thrown repeatedly until a file is obtained. The number of throws taken is denoted by the random variable x. So repeatedly, repeatedly, which means it is a geometric distribution until a 5 is obtained. Okay, ordinary fair die, which means the probability of having a 5 is 1 upon 6. So this is the probability of success. Write down the mean of x. Oh, whenever we find out the mean of uh, in the geometric distribution, we will do like this. Mean is equal to... 1 upon 1 upon 6 so this is the answer for mean and then find the probability that a 5 is obtained after the third throw but before the eighth throw okay so it's saying after the third throw um, after the third throw 3 greater than x and but before the eighth throw it says after the third throw but before the eighth throw so you got this okay now how to find the probability of this simple we, we are just going to like for example this is the number number line this is three and this is eight and saying that it's in, in here around here and we need to find the probability so what we're going to do we're going to as we have done in binomial we're going to see here and see here we're going to 
we, can, we will take 1 and then minus and find the probability of x less than equal to 3 and finding the, the probability of x greater than equal to 8 and then subtract it and then you will get the probability of this one okay it's it's the same similar steps techniques we have, which we have done in binomial it's just a little bit uh, different so finding the probability of this is uh, 1 minus 1 minus q of power 3 and finding the probability of this is uh, uh, minus q 7 okay so this is the answer and if I just see this is how you write it down okay so 1 minus 5.6 of power 3 which I have just showed you right yeah 1 minus power 5.6 of power 3 and then minus 5.6 of power 7 I have just done it directly 1 uh, 1 1 is cancelled out and this is the answer okay so this is the answer for having x uh, 3 x 8 of probability okay now moving to the next question uh, two fair coins are thrown at the same time the random variable x is the number of throws of the two coins required to obtain two tails at the same time find the probability that two tails are obtained for the first time on the seventh row. the probability of obta obtaining two tails are 1 upon 2 multiplied by 1 upon 2 which is 1 upon 4 probability of success okay find the probability that the two, two, two tails are obtained for the first time on the seventh row okay so after throwing so many times till sixth uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so it's going to be Q. The probability of area is 6, and then you got the first throw after in 7th throw. Probability of 1 is this. So Q is 3 upon 4 of power 6, and then of power 1, and this is the answer. Okay, this is the answer. Now, part two: find the probability that it that it takes more than nine throws to obtain uh, two tails for the first time. Find the probability that it takes more than nine throws. It takes more than nine, which means we need to find the probability of takes more than nine to obtain two tails for the first time. So this is really simple. I have no I know the formula, and you have to just do it directly. So it's going to be Q of power nine. That's it. So according to this formula which has which I've just showed you here you go okay so seeing the formula I can really show you uh, what is the answer so this is the answer okay and putting Q means it's going to be 3 upon 4 power 9 so this is the answer there you go Okay, in a certain region, the probability that any given day on October is wet is 0 0.60. Independently of other days, find the probability that, th that the first wet day in October is 8 October. So, probability of failure is 7 and the probability of this. So, um, 0 0.16. So, it's going to be um, 0 0.84. It's going to be 0 0.84 as the probability of failure and then for the first time it get wet it got a wet day so 0 0.16 since we have this right okay so this is the answer what is the answer let me use the calculator 0 0.87 of power uh, sorry we need to know that okay so 0 point, uh, 0 point, uh, 0 0.84 of power 7 and uh, multiply this by 0 0.16 power 1 and you will get 0 0.05 okay so you will get 0 0.05 okay or you get you will just get 0 0.0472 fine okay for 4 randomly let me just go with this one for 4 randomly chosen uh, years 0, .0 
four seven two for four randomly chosen year find the probability that in exactly one of these years okay so this is binomial as you can see this is the limit this is four which is n the four randomly chosen year find the probability that in exactly one of these years the first word day in october is october number okay so this part was uh, geometric distribution and this part was binomial because in here you can see this this is uh there's a limit and there is no limit says so it says it's been yeah this is binomial okay so what i'm going to do for c1 then multiply by i know what is uh, value so 0 0.0472 uh yes and then you're going to subtract it by one uh, 0 0.0472 and you get what three and i think this is the answer and yes of course this is the answer done Okay, next question. An ordinary fair die is thrown repeatedly. This is geometric distribution until a uh, one or six is obtained. Until a one or six, which mean you need to plus them. So one upon six plus one upon six is one upon three. This is the prob the probability of success. Find the probability that it takes at least three throws, but no more than five throws to obtain one or a six. Okay, it take at least three throw three throws. So x is greater than equal to three, but not more than five throws. But not more than five throws. So let me write it down like this. And we need to find the probability of this. Okay. So it's saying that at least three throws, but not more than five throws, which means five is included, but not more. This is three. This is five. Saying that it comes between. But we need to look here and here, so we're going to subtract this by minus, you know, one minus, and we're going to take x is less than three probability of this, and probability of x is greater than five. Okay, so having the, the probability of this is one minus one minus um, q two, and this one is q5 that's it so minus uh minus okay so this is cancel out and you will get this so which means you will get 2 upon 3 2 2 upon 3 5 and i think this is the answer so let me check it out and correct this is the answer okay so this is the end of geometric distribution. This is what geometric distribution is, and let's go. Let's get a move on to normal distribution. So let's start with normal distribution. Normal distribution is for continuous data. You know, binomial distribution and geometric distribution is for discrete data. Discrete means you know countable values, but this is for continuous. This is for continuous data, like a person's height, a person's blood pressure, time, years. You know, something which is continuous, and you need to make an estimate of it, right? So whenever you try to make an estimation, whenever there's a continuous data, then you will choose normal distribution. So continuous data can take any value within a range that and it is measured. We can use binomial we can't use binomial we cannot use binomial distribution for continuous data points. Even if we tried it, it would it would waste a lot of time. It would it would put so much time, you have no idea. That's why we use normal distribution to make an estimation to save our time and money. Right? So we use normal distribution for kind for continuous data points. It is an approximation to the binomial. A continuous random variable has an infinite number of possible values that, are, that can be represented by an interval on the number line. The probability distribution of a continuous random variable is called a continued uh, continuous probability distribution. The most important probability distribution in statistics is the normal distribution. The graph of normal distribution is called the normal curve. So it's like a, a bell curve, right? So normal distribution, its properties this is the normal distribution it looks like a bell curve right and there's a symmetry 50% uh, here 50% here it looks symmetrical right the mean median and mode is the same so in between is the mean the line you can also median and mode you know all has the same value but between here is the mean uh, of, uh, above mean and below mean 50 50 percent okay so first you try to make a normal distribution you get all the values you get the mean this is the mean these are the values and then you just try to standardize this uh, you, you also you are using the standard deviation as well 
so this is a, the standard normal distribution it means you have the mean and these are the standard deviations like one one standard deviation or uh, two button standard, standard, standard deviation these are positive standard deviation and these are negative standard deviation it's actually minus not plus I uh, make a mistake this is actually minus okay so 68% within one standard deviation for example if you have a 7 standard deviation of 1.5 so 1 point plus 1 1.5 and minus 1 1.5 this is the first standard deviation then in this is the second standard deviation okay and this is the third standard deviation you will understand this shortly don't worry about it the standard deviation is a measure of how spread the number are from the mean the number of standard deviation from the mean is also called the standard score sigma or z score okay so it's more it's more popular in z score to convert a value to a standard deviation z score to a standard score first subtract the mean then divide by the standard deviation as you will use this formula this is a z score which means this is how you take the standard yeah, no. these are all z score actually these are all z score these are all z score right so x is which is the value minus mean upon standard deviation then you get the z score okay now let's come here uh, probability of a normal curve the total area under the normal curve is equal to 1 it start from here and it ends from here right always remember it start from here and it ends from here and the area of you know of the, the, the total area under the normal curve is equal to 1 I'm talking about the probability by the way so this is the C score okay and the total limit Z score is 3 3 and minus C and this is the mean Okay, it's telling us that, that you have these these values, it's 15 and it's 10. When you standardize it, standardize it, it will look something like this, 0 and 1. Okay, it will look something like this. So these are z-score and these are just values. You got the mean and you got the 15. Then you just put our formula to find the z-score. This is the z-score. Okay. Okay, and the only way to find the probability is by using this diagram. We will go through this shortly, don't worry about it. Let's go to the questions first. Statistic test was 78 with a standard deviation of 8. Okay. If the test scores were no are normally distributed, find the probability that the students receive a sto score uh, greater than 85. Okay. So what we have here, the average, which means this is the mean. This is a mean u with a standard deviation of 8. Okay, so this is a standard deviation. If the test scores are normally distributed, find the probability that the student receive a test score greater than 85 greater than 85 this is the value x this is the value x so using the formula right here we're going to use this formula so 85 minus this mean upon this to get the c-score so first of all we're going to do that and yeah 85 minus 78 78 is mean upon 8 which is the third division and you get the c-score now you need to find the probability that the student receive a test score greater than 85 which means it receives a test score greater than 0 0.875 okay the z-scores look something like this first of all you got 85 so this was 85 and then here you got uh, 78 as a mean but then you just convert it to z-score and now the, this is the z-score and now you need to find the probability student receive us uh, student receive a test score greater than 80, 85 right so we define this but right now we will try to find the probability of this less than 0 0.85 this is the probability that we are going to find and then after finding it we will subtract it like this okay in order to get this it's very simple same thing as I have done so many times probability and binomial and you know geometric so first of all we're going to find this probability that it must be less than 0 0.875 how to find this we will use that table we will use this table this is the table that we're going to use okay so first uh, okay so 0 0.875 875 0.875 right so let me write it down 0 0.875 so these are all the z score and then we are converting it into a probability and 
as you can see here so the normal width means uh, for each value to get value okay so we are trying to find the calculate the probability you know converting the z score into a probability and you know it start from 0 to 1 so less less than z score you know, less than this you get the probability by using this uh, the normal distribution function table so 0 0.8 First of all, we need to 0 0.8, and this is 0 0.8. Okay, now we need to find 7. So we'll find here yeah, this is 7, and you got this. Okay, now we will find 5, and you got wait, you got 5 here. So it's going to be this. Okay, so you got this value, it's going to be 0 0.80 seven eight and you got 14 so you're going to add 14 here it's going to be look something like 0 0.0014 you add it and you will get the answer let me use my calculator 0 0.8078 plus 0 0.0014 and you got 0 0.8092 okay you got 0 0.8092 right 0 0.8092 so you got the probability of this one so it's 0 0.8092 then you just subtracted by 1 0 0.8092 and you got this and you got the probability of this so this is the answer okay then we have another question the average on a statistical test was 78 with a standard normal standard division of 8 this is the mean this is standard deviation uh normal distributed final probability that student receive a test score less than 90 okay this question is really easy right now it's saying that we need to find the probability of of you know it must be less than 90 so first of all you're going to convert it into a z score and then you're just going to see in the table you will see in the table and then you will get the probability okay it's really that simple so first convert it to z so it's 1.5 then we need to find the probability you will see in the table you got this and that's it this is the answer okay this is how it looks this 90 and, and you just convert it into z score so it's 1.5 z okay so we have another question the average on a statistic test was 78 so this is the mean with a standard deviation of 8 standard deviation if the test scores are normally distributed find the probability that a student receive a test score less than 68 okay less than 68 so you just take 68 minus mean 78 standard deviation and you will get you will get minus 1.5 1.25 z okay so you got this z score and if i just try to draw this like uh, the normal distribution then this is zero this is one this is minus one so z score is right here okay this this is minus 1.25 right now the problem is that we cannot uh, there is no negative value in the in this in here how will you find how will you be able to calculate the probability if there is no negative sign in here so it's only for positive right positive for it's only for positive z score value there is no negative so that's the problem that we need to figure it out and how to solve this right so we got this negative okay now listen carefully we know one thing for sure that okay what happens if i try to okay so right here is minus 1.25 right and in here it could also be 1.25 okay these two are similar minus 1.25 and 1.25 if i take the probab okay so we need to find this one right so if i try to take the probability uh, less than 1.25 like this and after taking the probability uh this is it would be like you no know, c uh less than 1.25 and if i subtract it to subtract this to one then what will i get i will get this this is what i get and this this part and this part are equal which is why this would be the probability that we need to find it's similar so this one this one and this one is similar this is how you're going to find the probability okay 
so this is exactly what I've done here so this was 68 right here you just calculate the z-score and this one minus 1.25 but as you can see here that these two areas are same so you can you're going to take this 1.25 z you're going to take the probability you will get this area part and then you just one minus the probability and you think you will get this then this one is equal to this one okay so you will get this and then you're just going to take the probability of this into so you just put uh, put down the minus and you you convert them to positive so yeah this then just minus and you will get this okay so you can easily find the probabilities of you can easily find the probability of the z score which are greater than uh, 50 which are greater than 50 you can easily find the z score probability of the z score like here right the minimum is okay okay you can easily find the probability which are greater than the mean greater than the mean. this part you can only f you know if you have the z scores z score from here then you can easily uh, i mean if you have the z score from here to here you can easily find the probability okay so it start from zero which means and you know standard division is the uh, average distance from the mean it tells us average distance from the mean okay so this is what i'm telling you guys okay so if there's you can only find which is greater than uh yeah you can find those find the probability if the if if the if this is greater than zero zero z score okay i mean above the mean not below okay let's move on let's do okay normal across approximation to binomial distribution okay uh, don't worry about this uh once for example if you have been uh uh, you will be asked about to make an approximation of the binomial distribution it will be uh, mentioned in the question okay and whenever you, and whenever you have been asked this about whenever whenever you have been asked this about it what will you do okay so normal approximation to binomial distribution use to approximate the binomial distribution when it would be impractical to use a binomial distribution to find the to find a probability uh, most of the time normal distribution is used for continuous data but it can be used to make an approximation of the binomial distribution okay you, uh, what are the conditions to use uh, to make an approximation if the n is greater than 5 and n multiplied b is greater than 5 and n multiplied q is greater than 5 then you can use it then you can um, then then the binomial random variable x is approximately nor nor normal uh, uh, normalized uh, is, you, know, you can use uh, you can make, make an approximation distributed with mean okay okay so this is the mean this is the variance and this is the standard deviation we all know that this is for the binomial but you can use it in whenever we try to make approximation correction for continuity use a correction for continuity to convert the binomial interval to a normal distribution interval the probability of getting exactly at success minus 0 0.5 here plus 0 0.5 here the probability of getting at least at success x greater than n 0 0.5 here less than as inclusive then 0 0.5 plus here the probability of getting between 125 and 45 success inclusive you will do like this the minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 probability of getting less than or fewer than or at most and success you will do like this the probability of getting the greater uh, getting greater than and successes so you will do like this x is greater than so it's a complete chart and don't worry about it i will give the pdf for this one definitely if you need it okay you can, you can just ask me now moving to the next question the length of a fish of a particular species are modeled by a normal distribution a scientist measures the length of 400 randomly chosen fish of this species he finds that 42 are less than 12 centimeter long and 58 are more than 19 centimeter long find estimate for the mean and standard deviation of the length of the fish of this species okay so you got uh and you got and 400 randomly chosen fish of this species he finds that 42 fish are less than 12 centimeter 58 more than 90 centimeter find estimate of the find the mean and the standard deviation okay so here's what we're going to do okay 
so 42 fish are less than 1270 oh, okay so you can easily find the probability that the probability of having x less than 12 is 42 upon 400 and the probability of having uh, more than 90 centimeter is 58 upon 400 okay now you need to find the mean how will you find the mean it's really simple uh, first of all you're going to try to convert it into z score right you will use that formula so x minus mean upon standard deviation is equal to z score so x instead of x we will write down for uh, 12 we need to find the mean we need to find the standard deviation and uh, we need to convert this this probability into a z score back to z score you will write like this okay you will write like this it it means that you need to convert this into into a z score 40 42 upon 400 so it's 0 0.105 okay you need to make uh, a diagram definitely so this is the normal curve and it says 0. Point, okay less than 12 okay so it must be in here since it's giving a very low probability so this this would be 0. 0. 0.105 and it's less than 12 so this is 12 this one is telling uh, what is the what is the probability of this one so it's 58 upon 400 this is also low so it must be in, uh, it must be in here this would this would be the probability the area and since it's telling that it's greater than 19 so this is 19 okay now we need to convert this into a z score for okay so what i'm trying actually trying to do is i'm trying to convert into this okay here's what i'm going to do the probability of of this this is 0, uh, 0 0.105 but uh, the problem is that the probability that we can uh, calculate is above uh, above 5 above, above 0 0.5 it must be above 0 0.5 in order to, in order to uh, convert the probability back into z score and for z score to probability you need to have z score greater than uh, greater than the mean okay in order to convert to uh, probability okay let me repeat it again for for z score to probability it needs to be greater than, greater than the mean for probability than the to the z score the probability must be greater than 0 0.5 that's it okay so now so we have this area of 0 0.105 this area of 1 0 0.145 but we need to find the um, the standard deviation of of this probability so what we're going to do here is we're going to we already know that the standard deviation of this and might be here will be the same right for, ex uh, if, for example if i uh, subtract this to you know one if i just do one minus uh, 0 0.1 uh, one minus 0 0.105 then it will give uh, 0 0.895 which means it's going to cover here it's going to cover here this would be 0 0.895 and right in here it's uh, it's actually uh, 0 0.105 and you need to understand this that the standard deviation of the z score of this one and this one is is the same okay so you will try to find the z score of this and then you put a minus since it's uh, right here the z score would be negative right so 0 0.895 like i've done it here see this is the probability and uh, after 1.045 so this is the probability and after converting this into the z score we got uh, 1.253 but then we're going to put a minus because in, in here the z score are all negative right so minus 1.253 okay so we got this we find find a statement of the mean after knowing the z score we can actually uh, pretty easily find the mean and the standard deviation using a uh, simultaneous equation solve okay so we have found a z score for this one so same thing we can also find the z score z score for this one as well we know that the okay the probability of this is this one but after doing minus we can the probability of this is full here uh, it, i mean the 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 probability of this this the probability uh, this one means that px is less than nine, uh, 19 okay and this one means that 
px is greater than 19 okay so we are using this we will convert this into a z score after converting it we got these two equations and now we can do simultaneous equation right going in reverse to find z score always choose the closest value always choose the closest. After converting this into a z score you got these two equations and you will just do simultaneous solve and you will get the values you got u and you got the side division okay you can just see right here this was the probability and this whole thing is 0 0.95 it's the same probability and this is 0 0.895 okay then we have another question The question is Josie aim to catch a bus which depart at a fixed time every day Josie arrive at the bus stop t minutes before the bus departs where t is the this is the symbol of that it, that it is a normal distribution of having the mean 5.3 and this is the variance okay if you try to square root this you will uh, you will find the standard deviation of 2.1 find the probability that Josie has to wait longer than 6 minutes at the bus stop okay Josie has to wait longer than 6 minutes huh So we got the mean and we, okay, so it's saying that uh, like for example you have this it's saying that uh, longer than 6 minutes okay 5.3 is the mean and longer than 6 minutes this is 6 and it's telling that you need to find the probability here longer than 6 minutes which means P is less than 6 in order to find this you will do this 1 minus Px less than 6 Okay, you can easily find, do it this way. So 6 minus 5.3 on the root of 2.1 square and you will get the z-score. You convert that z-score in, into a probability. Okay, that's exactly what I've done here. You got this, you convert this into, you convert into this. Which means here this is a probability of 0 0.63 and just one by 0 0.6304 4, and you will get this answer. Okay. Now it's uh, part two is saying on five percent of days Josie has to wait longer than x minutes at the bus stop. Find the value of x. On five percent of days Josie has to wait longer than x minute. Okay. So the probability is longer than longer than x minutes so let me just say it's greater than x minutes okay and the probability is uh, 0 0.005 but then okay find the value of x all right the best way to find this is by doing this way 0 0.0.95 0 Josie aim to catch a bus which depart at a fixed time every day. Josie arrive at a time bus time. Okay, we all know that. Find the probability that Josie has to wait longer than six minutes at the bus stop. X greater than six, and you now we all know um, Josie has to wait longer than six minutes. Okay, so we need to find this, and uh, we need we need to put six minus five point three. You got after you got the z score, you just convert it and you just get it right, like we have done it here. Six minus five three. So, so you got the z score, you convert it into into probability, and you got <coughs> part 2 is find the value of x and roller says okay so 5% of day juicy has to wait longer than x minute and what about less okay, find the value of x we gotta use this one so this is part 2 and you know we need to convert this into back to, to c score so after converting it so I just showed you how to convert it you know all. Okay, so let's convert this. 0 0.95 is the probability. Convert it to C score, right? So this is the probability and this is the C score. 1.645. Or you can just see in here. 0 0.95. Wait, 0 0.95, right? So, 0. Point, 0. Point, 0. Point 0.945. Okay, so this is 1.6 and 1.64 1.64 1.645 1.645 1.645 1.645 okay this is how you try to calculate the z score back to 
you know from probability to c score so this is how you do it and then you just find the value of x just like that put it and you just got the value of x find the probability that juicy missed the bus okay for the bus depart arrive at the bus stop find the probability that juicy has to wait longer than expected to at the bus stop find the probability that juicy misses the bus if juicy misses the bus then If Josie misses the bus, right now this is the distribution, right? That Josie have to catch up a bit by the fixed time. Every day Josie has to. Josie arrive at the bus stop t minutes before the bus departs. Okay, Josie arrive at the bus stop. It arrive at the bus stop t minutes before the bus depart. If the it's saying the probability that Josie missed the bus, which means there's no need to wait for the time. Right, this the this, the distribution is for is for when Josie aim to catch the bus and Josie is waiting for the bus. You know, Josie arrive at the bus stop t minutes before the bus departs. Josie has to wait longer than six minutes at the bus stop. Josie has to wait longer than x minutes at the bus stop. But the bus stop has but the bus has already gone. So what's the point of waiting? So t is less than zero. We need to find that probability. So zero minus five point three upon standard deviation. You got the you got, you got the c score, and this is what exactly ha happened here. Since there is no reason to wait on the, on the bus, t is less than zero. You just put all of this. You got c, and I have already told you that you put uh, you you you, uh, you you just neglect the minus sign. You just find first of all you got the you 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 try to uh, find the probability of 2.524. After finding that, you just minus two. You just subtract to one minus this, right? And you get this. This is the answer. okay so we have another question and the question is the daily minimum temperature in c degrees in another country in winter has a normal distribution with mean u and standard deviation to u 70 windows day are chosen at random find how many of these would be expected to have a minimum temperature which is more than three times the mean okay you got the mean you got standard deviation 70 windows days are chosen at random find how many of these would be expected expected to have a minimum uh, find how many of these would be expected which means we need to find the mean okay i mean we need to find the expected this is definitely like a normal uh, binary distribution would be expected to have a minimum temperature which is more than three times the mean okay find the probability which is more than three times the mean three u so you will get three u minus u upon standard deviation and you get the z score and then after final c, c score you just you know one minus that and then you get this probability so after getting this, you this is the probability of success, and you're going to multiply to that this. So this is the expected, even though this this this, this is the formula used in binomial. So you can just say that this the this is uh bino this more like uh, approximation to binomial, right? Seventy windows are chosen at random. Yeah, this is more like an approximation for binomial. It's really simple though. This you convert into probability and then one minus this and you get this probability and then you just this is the probability of success and just multiply it by this and you get this another question the time taken to play uh, Beethoven 6 symphony can be assumed to have a normal distribution with mean 41.1 minutes and division 3.4 minutes three occasion on which the symphony is placed are chosen at random three occasions on which the symphony is placed are chosen at random okay Find the probability that the symphony takes longer than 42 minutes to play in exactly one of the equations. Takes longer than 42 minutes. Okay, so you got mean, you got this. Takes longer than 42 minutes. You need to find the, that probability and that probability is the probability of success. And then you're going to put a binomial. It's going to be uh, 3C1 multiply by this. Like this. Okay, like I said. So you're going to find this. You put this and you got this 3C1. For which a student uses game machine, but in any day is a normal. It has a normal distribution. It's a normal distribution of x hours being used by by a student using game machine, right? Find the probability that the number of hours for which a randomly chosen student uses a game machine in a day is within 1.5 standard deviation of the mean. For example, like we have this graph, and we have this graph, right? Okay, so this is the mean, and it says 
so that you need to find the probability that the number of hours for which a randomly chosen student use a game machine in a day is within 1.5 standard deviation of the mean which mean 1.5 in here 1.5 in here and you need to find the probability of this part so how will you going to find this probability easy the most easiest way is you're going to convert this I mean uh, whenever we try to take the probability we always use the z score right so 1.5 z so we're going to find the probability which is less than 1.5 z the whole part and uh, yes after finding this we're going to find the probability of this one x greater than one point greater than 1.5 z okay you're going to find this probability in order to get this part and then you're going to you're going to subtract this to this uh, in order to get this okay for example like in here you just did uh, yeah, find the probability and then I want to find this part as uh, this probability in order to find this I'm going to take I'm going to subtract 1, mi one minus 0 0.9332 is, is equal to this and then I'm, I'm going to take this and subtract this again I'll get this so this is the answer this is the part we needed okay okay let's move on we have another question. The time spent by people visiting a certain dentist are independent and, and normally distributed with mean and standard deviation. Probably that the time spent when the dentist by a randomly chosen person deviates from the mean by more than one minute. Okay. So you need to find the probability that the time spent visiting the, the, this dentist by a randomly chosen person deviates from the mean by more than one minute, when, which means it, it, uh, the question is asking us. Uh, to find the probability of uh, so this is a diagram and it's saying that uh, uh, David from the mean by more than one minute by more than one minute it means uh, okay by more than one minute the mean is 8.2 and standard division is okay by more than one minute okay 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 so this is 8.2 this is the mean and it's saying by more than one minute which means you need to find this probability you need to find this area and you need to find this area so 8.2 is the mean and by more than one minute so 9.2 uh, 9 and 7.2 you need to find the probability of uh, greater than 9.2 and you need to find the prob probability of less than 7.2 okay so it's really easy you convert this 9.2 into a z score and z score to a probability which is less than then you just one minus this and you get this and as for this one uh, you obviously you know that uh, that the z score will be in negative form so you just neglect the negative and you get the positive it would be right here then you get that area and one minus this then you get this and you add them up same thing I've done here okay Okay, so don't worry, it's the same thing. Uh, 9.2 minus 8.2 and it will give 1. It will give 1, then 1 divided by 2.23. This one, right? And you will get the z-score and converting the z-score into a, into a probability. And 1 minus, then you will get this, okay? And yeah, you will get this. And as for this one, obviously you, you, you're just going to, yes, yeah, so it's really nice. You got the z score which is in negative form. Then you're going to neglect the negative part and you get the probability which is from here. And then one minus this, and you will get this. Then you just add them up, add them, add them, and you will get the answer. Simple. Okay, so now you have this question. New technology has resulted in a type of light bulb. New technology has resulted in a, in a type of light bulb. It is found that in on average of one in five, average one in five of these new light bulb has a lifetime of more than two thousand five hundred hours. So this is the probability that uh, we have the probability given that x it is greater than two thousand five hundred hours, and the probability is one upon five. Okay, found that on average one in five of these new light lifetime more than. For a random selection of 300 of these new light bulbs, use a suitable approximation distribution. Okay, now we are doing this. To, 
Okay, so for random selection of 300 of these new light bulbs, use a suitable approximation distribution for to find the probability that fewer than 70 have a lifetime of more than 2500 hours. Okay, so you have the probability of success, you got, um, okay, this whole thing, and uh, you got the total number of n, you, you need to put a suitable approximate distribution, and you need to find the probability that fewer than 70, fewer than 70, so this is our x, so, okay. Have a lifetime more than 2400. Okay. Fewer than 70 have a lifetime of more than 2500. So fewer than 70 have a lifetime of more than. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. You, I'm going to calculate the mean, and the way to calculate the mean is mean is equal to n multiplied by p, and n is what is n? n is 300, and multiply this by 1.1.5. 1. 1. Okay, so maybe I can just use a calculator. 300 multiplied by 1.5, 1. 1. and I got 60 as a mean. So I got the mean. Okay. So I got the mean, I got the x, um, as for the standard deviation, I'm going to use, for, I will calculate variance. So n multiplied by p multiplied by q, so 300 multiplied by, I can just do it directly, 60 multiplied by uh, 4 upon 5. And then I'm just going to do square root, and I will get the standard deviation. So 60 multiplied by 4 upon 5, and I will get, um, I will get, 6.930 this is the standard deviation which I got I got the mean I got the standard deviation and now what I needed is okay so 70 minus 60 upon 6.930 I got that um, z score and converting that z score into a probability okay another thing is I need to use a suitable approximation distribution uh, it's fine it's fine just by use of a nozzle sample okay <laughs> Since it's saying that you, you need to use a suitable approximate distribution, which means you're going to use these and the probability of getting less than or the probability of getting okay, the probability of getting less than, fewer than at most. So I'm going to uh, my make a deduction of 0 0.5 to the total. So x less than as uh, since uh, x is 70, I'm going to do 69.5. Okay, so x less than 69.5. So there you have it, you got the mean and you got the standard deviation, you got this 69.5, you got the z-score and converting the z-score into a probability and you got the probability. Justify the use of your approximate distribution because the n, uh, because the, the um, you know, n matlab is greater than uh, 5 and matlab q is greater than 5 and you know, both are 5 so it is justified to use approximate distribution. Next question please. Now in here the question is a die is biased so that the probability of, of throwing a 5 is 0 0.75 and the probability of throwing a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 are all equal. Okay, so yeah, the die is thrown 90 times using an approximate appro uh, appropriate approximation. Find the probability that a 5 is thrown more than 60 times. Okay, five of that the 5 is thrown, that a 5 is thrown more than 60 times. Okay. So you got the n. First of all, you're going to find the mean. So this multiplied by 0 0.75, you got the mean, and then you get the standard deviation as well. And then it says uh, it is thrown more than 60 times. So first of all, you get the probability of throwing less than 60 times. So 60 minus mean upon standard deviation, you get the z-score. Then 1 minus that, and you get the uh, probability. But since it is pro approximate, uh, appropriate approximation, uh, it is thrown more than 60 times, so it's going to be plus 0 0.5. And there you go. This plus 0 0.5 because it's according to this getting greater than, so it's going to be 0 0.5. Okay. Yes. So this is how we're going to do it. 
you got the mean you got the standard deviation you put it you do it and you got the so here we have the bell curve uh, let me draw it here we go okay so it's saying greater than 6.5 which means it must be okay so 60.5 is saying 60.5 so it's so here you go so this is 60.5 60 uh 60.5 wait, wait 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 yeah 60.5 so this is 60.5 and we need to find the probability of greater than so we need to find here this one this probability we need to find this probability okay in order to do that uh, first of all we're going to convert this into a z score we got the z score this is z score minus one uh, minus 1.704 then we convert this you know uh so z we neglect the neg negative sign and then after neglecting it it would be right here then we get the we get the area from here from this side okay we got the area and then one minus it so we got this area so after getting this area we actually got this one right after getting this area we got this one so yeah so we just got this area and then we just do 1 minus 0 0.0442 and then we got the answer okay okay moving on this is another question each data enable eat rice potato or pasta independently of each other the probability that she eat right rice is 0 0.75 the probability that she eat potato is this did she eat pasta is this find the probability that enable eat potato on more than 44 days in a year of 365 years okay find the probability that enable eat potatoes on more than 44 days on more than 44 days more than 44 days so 44 minus okay the animal eat potato the probability of eating potato is 0.15 okay the total amount the total number n number is 365 so we're going to find the mean then we're going to find the standard deviation and then it's the same thing okay there's another thing i need to point it out since this is uh, discrete in discrete form it is this is not this is not continuous right you can just count it uh, in you know in fingers so this is uh, this is more like a approximation to binomial distribution you're making approximation of that right which means we are still going to use that we're going to use this chart because definitely we are making approximation to binomial distribution because the only way to find out is whether when the question have um, have is telling you that you need you are using a using a suitable normal uh, approximation to normal distribution, or you could just find it out that the that the data that you are trying to make a uh, make a you, the, the data you are using is discrete. No, it's not continuous. It's, it's not like you are measuring the time or you are measuring the height, you are measuring a voltage or something like that. You are measuging uh, discrete values like you can you can actually count them, right? So 44 days in a year of 365 days. So this is discrete. Okay. It's saying more than 44, which means you're going to put uh, 0 0.5 plus. Okay. So first of all, you're going to find the mean, 65 multiplied by this, and we're going to find the standard deviation. And this discrete, not continuous, so binary distribution is applicable, but since it would too long, so we will use some approximate distribution. So this is going to be 44.5. And we all know why. what are we doing. We're going to find this. Uh, okay. So we got... Uh, okay. Let me draw the diagram again so we got the mean which is 54.75 and we uh, we have this x so this is 54.75 54.75 and we got the mean uh, we got the x value which is 44.5 and we need to find the probability which is greater than this so we need to find the probability which is greater than 44.5 okay so first of all we're going to convert this into a uh, into a z score Converting this into a z-score, we got in minus form, and we neglect the minus. So, okay, so we neg neg neglect the minus, and we got 1.502, and then you can you you're going to take the probability from you know less than 1.502, and after taking the probability, you're going to do minus. So we go you're going to get this area, and this area is equal to this area, and then again you're going to do minus. Okay, you can you're going to do minus to one, and you will get this, the whole thing. So this is the answer. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and this is the end of this, the the chapter four, which includes normal distribution, binomial distribution, and geometric distribution. And this is the end of A level math S one nine seven zero nine. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you all, and I hope you'll you'll do great in your exam.